Hello everybody and welcome to Noble Weapons 5th tutorial in the quick and simple tutorial series. Due to popular demand, in this tutorial we're going to be talking about tile maps. Um, I didn't know much about tile maps before doing this tutorial, but I have studied it a bit for you guys and I hope you like it. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, create a sprite collection like we've done before. So create TK2D sprite collection and uh, we're gonna call this tile map. All right. And the next thing we're going to do, like we always do, is open the editor. But this time we're going to go and click Create Sprite Sheet. This menu only takes one texture. Uh, this texture has to have a format similar to this one, in that uh, all tiles have the same tile size and they're grouped together in this way. And you're going to see why in a moment. Uh, this is very typical of Zelda-like games and 2D you know, RPGs. I found it in the RPG Maker forums. So I'm going to drag it here to the texture space and you can see it loads the texture. And now what we have to do is specify what the tile width and tile height are. Um, for this specific case the tiles are 32 by 32 um, but you can have tiles of any size you want. So as you can see it has split the tiles for us and uh, if you did this carefully in your favorite uh, image editing program, you'll see that it matches, it lines up perfectly right. Um, if you had a tile set with uh, spaces in between tiles, you could set the margins here. As you can see, this is some sort of uh, tiny offset that you can set, you know, for security or whatever, just to make sure that uh, tiles don't overlap each other or, you know, just for convenience. The last thing we're going to do is set the padding mode to extend, and that makes sure that bilinear filtering works properly when you upscale your game. For example, uh, in bigger screens, wherever you're going to play. So we set it to extend and apply and come in. Right, the next thing we need to do is uh, create a tile map. So we're going to go to create TK2D tile map. Um, and in the sprite collection drop down, we select our uh, tile map sprite collection. This one's it. Um, and here in tile map data and editor data, because this is the first tile map we do, we're going to click create on both. So we create and we save it somewhere. I believe I saved it here. And we create the editor data as well. This data needs to be created for the first time now, but can be reused for other tile maps. So uh, for example, um, if you reuse tile map data, you can quickly switch between tile sets and you reskin your level. So say you have a snow level or a grass level or um, I don't know, a swamp level and uh, the, the tiles are placed in the same relative places, um, you can quickly uh, switch between those and, and skin your level very easily. And the tile map editor data stores things like brushes and uh, other preferences. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, set everything up for painting. So uh, we're going to set the view to back and we're going to disable the uh, perspective so we have a nice orthographic view. And as you can see, we have in white the canvas over which we're going to paint the tile set. So now we're going to review the settings before uh, painting anything. Um, the dimensions tab has a width and height setting, and if you set this to 10, this uh, effectively reduces the canvas's area to something smaller. Uh, we're going to leave, it, leave this like it was, but you can set this to whatever size. Uh, you want or you need. Um, then inside layers you're going to have the several layers. We'll talk about that in just a moment and you'll see why this is needed and why it's problematic not to have it. Then in info you have some stats like memory that your tile set takes up or how many active chunks of your tile map are being used and so on, right? Then in tile properties you can have rectangular tiles or you can have isometric tiles. Um, isometric tiles are those that, for games like Civilization uh, and other games that have an isometric perspective, we're not going to need this for now, so we, we leave this as rectangular. But so, just so you know that it's, it's in development and it's something you can use. Uh, then the sort method is the uh, method that is used for sorting and putting tiles on top of one on top of the others. Um, inside palette properties you can simply set how you want your brushes to be sorted so for example you can put 
different tiles per row, say 14, and it'll expand, it'll have uh, more tiles per row than the original bitmap ha had. And this is just for, for convenience. Um, and display scale is simply scaling to a different size of tile. We'll keep it at one because we want a, a pixel perfect view of our tile map. And then import is simply for external tools that export uh, their tile maps in TMX format. You can import them here. Okay, so now we're getting to where everyone wants to get, which is painting the tiles. Um, for this we have a tab here which is called paint. And you'll see that as soon as I click on it, we have this um, paint menu. Um, we're going to briefly explain what everything does, okay? But it's pretty straightforward. So you'll have a draw. We simply draw whatever we have selected. So say I select this um, little brush here. I can either paint one by one, or I can paint a whole column of them. I can do this, for example, and paint many cliffs. I can paint many ends to the cliffs so I can connect them all like that. Um, I could potentially create a lot of grass and then create the borders and then create the other borders. As you can see this is very fast to do. Um, you can create very very large sceneries in, in no time. Then there's the uh, random draw and this is for example you have several selected so say I select this grass and this other grass I select these two grasses you can randomly create patches of different grasses this is to give some variety to everything uh, in this case they don't exactly match but you get the point for example yeah I'll do something better I'll select this grass and this other one and I'll create a random scenario with rocks as you can see this is much better well this is intended for many tiles of course you can uh, experiment with that as much as you like. Say you don't like it, you have the erase button. You can also do that with control. So if I select the draw menu but I click control, I can still delete some more tiles. Then I have the eyedropper which means from the tiles I already have present here I can select the one I want and then paint over that with, with the uh, eyedrop tiles. I can also eyedrop big chunks of tiles. Um, then you can cut so of course it's exactly the same but you simply transfer somewhere else then you uh, can flip horizontally so look at this you see the orientation uh, of the rock I can flip it horizontally and it'll look to the other side and then I can also flip vertically to make I don't know some uh, weird world where gravity is inverted and then of course I have a uh, scratch pad where I can uh, potentially put tiles that I like and later I can retrieve them with the eyedropper tool I can simply put them and I don't have to put them in the uh, in the final tile map right so this is more like a stuff that I'm using but I don't want in my final tile map sort of uh, yeah scratch pad to use well I have this and it's pretty convenient pretty nice and now we have something problematic I already talked about this before let's say I want to draw one of these stumps and I want to put it on top of the grass you see that the stump has some alpha surrounding it. It should perfectly get integrated in the rest of the scenario. But you'll see that by putting it, I remove the tiles that were below. And this doesn't look good at all. Enter layers. And layers are a powerful way of uh, making scenarios more complex by adding different layers. Here in the tile map render data, you see that there's one layer and these are all the chunks that are being used right now and chunks aren't tiles chunks are simply regions of the whole canvas that we're using so as you can see here we have row zero okay so we have four chunks zero zero and zero one would be to the right zero two would be a little bit more to the right and zero three would be the rightmost right and once we get to chunk one zero it will get to the second row starting from below um, yeah and so chunk one one chunk one two until it fills the whole canvas so what we need to do to create a new layer is go to the tile map let's uh, close this for now and in settings we have uh, the layers drop down I told you we were going to talk about this um, let's go ahead and change the name of this layer we'll call this grass 
And after we do that, we can add another layer and call this, yeah, maybe something like props. I don't know. Put whatever name you want. And you have to click come in. Once you do this, you go to the tile map, render data, and you'll see that you have the grass and you have the trees. Right, so the last thing we're going to do is paint on the layers. So uh, let me just zoom in a little bit here. If we go, if we select the tile map and we click edit, then we click on the on the uh, paint tab. Um, you can see that in under the layers uh, menu, we have the two layers that we've created. And depending on which one you choose, you paint on one or the other. So if I, for example, select the grass and I paint a patch of grass somewhere around here, um, I can then select the trees rocks layer and paint tree stumps maybe for I don't know for blocking the heroes way or whatever they will be drawn on the layer that is on top um, so for example I can even paint really big trees like this um, 5 by 4 tree it will uh, allow me to put it on top of the uh, of the grass layer right there's one last thing I want to show you which is layer order and you change the layer order by going to settings into the layers drop down and um, you can toggle the fixed Z option uh, what this means is that if the fixed Z is unselected um, then this Z offset will always be zero and the other layers will have a Z coordinate a relative to this first layer if I do a fixed Z then I can modify all others and they will have a um, Z coordinate that I can set so if, for example I put a 1 here then this whole layer should get in front as you can see and this is the way to order your layers and make sure that they overlap properly there is one last very 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 awesome feature of uh, tile maps and that is lighting and so there's two ways to light uh, tile maps in 2D Toolkit. One of them is uh, static lighting and the other is dynamic. Um, let's show the static lighting first and static lighting is based on simply coloring the tile set. So let's go ahead and um, click edit and inside color we can create a color channel. And inside the color channel we're going to create um, a dark color and you'll see why in a moment. Let's get this sort of uh, red uh, gray sort of color and uh, I'm going to add a couple of tiles uh, to the grass so for example I've selected this um, this uh, road um, and I'm going to put a bridge right on top of it okay so I go to the trees rocks um, layer you would probably do something different and I'm going to create a bridge that crosses you know over it right okay and let's say that this bridge actually takes you to an unknown dark world okay and you want to reflect that in your game go to the color channel you created and paint everything in a darker color a darker mysterious world this is for a change of mood it's you know lighting your level you can also use it probably for shadows or uh, whatever else you want and now we're going to introduce um, dynamic lighting which uh, has only been available since 2D Toolkit 2.3 and uh, that is because the normal generation was incorrect but now it works um, so the first thing you need to do is go to the uh, sprite collection click on it open it in the editor and in settings um, select normal generation normals only you will see that this is none by default but then lighting won't work so you need to generate the normals and then click commit and once you've done that, we'll go to the the tile map render data and in the chunks, sorry, first commit your changes, and then in the chunks you change uh, the shader, right? In the material you change the shader from blend vertex color to um, lit blend vertex color. What this means is it's going to read um, the available uh, light sources from Unity, right? Right now it's a little bit lit because the ambient color is different from black or else this would be totally black um, we're going to create a point light and as you can see it's already lighting everything um, you could uh, increase the range maybe and change the color a little bit to suit this uh, night sort of um, mood better um, if you want you can also move it in the Z coordinate so it doesn't look so concentrated and well you can play with this 
and do whatever you like with it but as you can see it works properly and it's very very cool so I guess this is it for this tutorial if you have any questions you can feel free to uh, post them in the comments below and if you have any screenshots or tile maps that you want to show off um, feel free to put them below or even in the 2D Toolkit forums where more people will see them. And well, I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned a lot from these. I'll see you guys next time.